an instrument landing system, otherwise known as an ILS, enables an aircraft to follow an optimum descent when approaching and landing on a runway. Although the aircraft shown here is flying on a sunny day with excellent visibility, airliners and other aircraft need to be able to approach and land safely in bad weather and also at night. Therefore, lateral guidance, that is left and right, is provided in the form of a localizer beam. Vertical guidance, that is up and down, is provided in the form of the glide slope. The localizer and glide slope beams are created from radio signals emitted from ground stations, like you see here. The localizer signal comes from an array of directional antenna, normally located beyond the end of the runway. The glide slope signal comes from an antenna array located to one side of the runway touchdown zone. The location of the receiving antennae will vary depending on the aircraft. But in our example, we see them mounted behind the radar. To ensure the aircraft is receiving signals from the correct ILS, the pilot will use the VHF NAV frequency selector to select the ILS frequency for the destination runway. In this case, the channel frequency is 110.5 MHz, often expressed as 110.5. The localizer beam is created by two overlapping lobes modulated at different frequencies. The lobe on the left side of the approach is modulated at 90 Hz, whilst the right side is modulated at 150 Hz. A receiver in the aircraft compares the strength of both of these signals and then displays this to the pilot as a deflection on a deviation bar. Here, the aircraft is directly over the runway centerline, so receives both signals with equal strength, resulting in no deflection. But any deviation produces a difference in the strength between the two signals. Now the aircraft is to the right, and so the deviation bar deflects to the left, indicating to the pilot that the runway is to the left. The glide slope is also created by two overlapping lobes, angled so that one is above the other. The strength of both of these signals are compared and then displayed to the pilot as a deflection on a glide slope indicator. If the aircraft is above the glide slope, the pointer deflects downwards, indicating to the pilot to fly down. If the pointer deflects upwards, the pilot needs to fly up. The optimum descent path is identified by the intersection of the localizer plane and the glide slope plane. So let's now look at how that might be indicated to the pilot on a variety of different instruments. The 
typical instrument such as a CDI will combine the function of a localizer indicator and a glide slope indicator to show the deviation from both these planes. On a typical HSI, like we see here, any deviation left or right of the localizer plane is shown on a deviation bar within the center of the compass card. Deviation below or above the glide slope is shown on the vertical scale to the right. Next, we can see an EFIS system from an Airbus A320. The display to the right is known as the navigation display, currently set to ROSE ILS mode. As you can see, the functionality is very similar to the HSI that we saw earlier, except that in this case, the localizer deviation bar is colored magenta, and the glide slope deviation is indicated by a magenta diamond symbol. We can see this move now as the aircraft descends below the glide slope. And we can also see that the functionality is duplicated on the PFD. By correct use of the ILS, we can now see that the aircraft is positioned on the optimum descent to the selected runway. And finally, let's look at marker beacons. On the approach to some runways, marker beacons are positioned at fixed distances in line with the approach path. As the aircraft flies over each marker beacon, a transmission is received which activates the relevant indicator on the instrument panel. For aircraft fitted with an EFIS, the marker beacon indications will appear on the PFD. You may note that the position over the inner marker is indicated by a white AWY indication. The reason for this is because it also functions as the indicator for an airways marker beacon. And that now concludes this lesson on the ILS. We hope you found it useful. You may wish to know that the CBT software used for this demonstration was the ILS Trainer, created by Svera Training Systems, based in the UK. This is a fully interactive CBT application that will run on a standard PC in any classroom and is one of many similar CBT applications for the instruction of radar and radio navigation. For more information, see the details on screen.